Hi friends, welcome to the world of ultrasound. Tell me, would you like to see a cricket match live in real time as it happens? Or would you want to look at the images of that cricket match sometime after it has already happened? Well, I am sure we all love watching a match in real time live, isn't it? Well, that is this modality of ultrasound for you. Well, the biggest advantage, the biggest feature of ultrasound you know, is that it is a real time imaging modality. Think of it like this, whenever you look at a CT scan image, whenever you look at an X-ray, whenever you look at an MRI image or MRI scan for that sense, you are looking at spot images of a particular organ that have been taken some time in the past and you are just viewing them right now. Whereas, when we are performing an ultrasound scan on a patient, what we are looking at inside the patient's body is what are all the events that are happening in real time in the patient's body, right? So this is the biggest advantage, a biggest differentiate that, uh, you know, serves the utility of this modality that is ultrasound. It is a real time assessment modality, right? It is relatively cheap now, very readily available. It can be done at the bedside as well. Well, friends, we have spoken a lot about the advantages of ultrasound as a modality, but on the other hand, there are some challenges with it as well. This modality is an, you know, is an entirely operator dependent modality, right? If you compare it with X-ray, CT scan, MRIs, remember that for ultrasound, you need to have two skill sets which are entirely, you know, distinct, entirely different. What are those? One, the first skill set is the, you know, when you are trying to do the ultrasound, you want to get good ultrasound images using the ultrasound probe. So the skill of ultrasound image acquisition is very important. And once you have acquired those images, the second skill set that you need is to interpret those images and make a correct diagnosis, right? So in this focus module, right, in this course, we are going to focus on both of these skill sets. We have already studied the basics, that is the physics, the fundamental part of ultrasound as a modality that will help us in this discussion. What I am going to do for you in this particular session here is we, I am going to introduce you to the ultrasound machine, the various parts of the ultrasound machine, the various knobs, various settings, the probes, indications, their limitations, how to use them and I am going to try and sensitize you to the first skill set that we just discussed and what is that? It is how to acquire an ultrasound image. Once you learn how to acquire the ultrasound image, the next skill set that you need, that is the interpretation part, you know, of those particular images, this is something that will be discussed as you progress ahead in this particular course, okay? So let us turn our attention to the ultrasound machine here. Well, this is my ultrasound machine. This is my eye, right, to look inside the patient's body. What are the various parts of the ultrasound machine? This is the screen or the monitor. This is the display screen of the machine. Now, nothing special about it. It's an LED screen nowadays. In some older ultrasound machines, you might have a smaller screen, which is not an LED display, but an LCD display. Make sure whenever you are looking at the screen, you are perfectly at the same level as that of the screen display. If you're going to do ultrasound for a long period of time, you know, looking high up to the screen or looking down, you know, is not ergonomically recommended. If you are using an LCD screen, right, on an older machine, on an older display, remember that your, your eyesight should be perfectly aligned with that of the screen. Turning the screen to one side or the other, it may give rise to, uh, you know, a little bit of artifactual appearances on the screen and you don't want to do that. Okay. Now we come to this particular uh, part of the machine. This is what is the console. Now, if you look at the console, there are what you can say at least 20 to 30 different buttons that you see on this particular console, right? In fact, there is a different speciality, some speciality of, you know, ultrasound, which is called knobology. What is knobology? Knobology tells us, teaches us what is the best way to use each of these individual knobs well in order to optimize the image so that we get a good image, right? You will get lost when you look at this you know, console for the first time, but that is the reason why I am here, right? I am going to hold your hand and tell you what each of these knobs does, what is the function and how we can use it to the best so that we can get the best ultrasound image. Now, newer machines will have a touch screen display here. Most of the older machines, if you are working on a, a medium to intermediate range machine, won't have this touch screen panel, but don't worry, all the functionality will then be on the knobs or the console. You will have a standard keyboard here for uh, patient data entry and labeling purposes. 
Then we come to the most important part of the machine and these are the probes. As you can see here in this particular machine, you have one, two, three, four and five probes which are attached there, right? The, there can be different types of probes, different number of probes that can be uh, available with your machine. Don't worry, we are going to discuss each of these probes, you know, in detail, including their indications. We have already had a basic discussion in the theory part. Now, these probes, see here, they have a wired attachment here and this wire is basically an optical fiber, you know, which is connected to a part of the machine where all the probe slots, you know, are inserted and that is where the probe attachment site is. Uh, it is worthwhile to quickly have a note in your machine how many probes are attached, right? There might be four probes available here, but the probe attachment slots might only be three. So that if you have to use the fourth probe, you'll have to remove one probe attachment and insert that respective probe attachment port at that particular site. Right now, it would be worthwhile if you can uh, now see what make your machine is. Now, if you look at this particular machine, now this is a G uh, make machine. Usually, the machines you'll find in your hospitals can be either G, Philips, Samsung's, Siemens, and all these. Uh, though these brands, uh, you know, will offer different different features, and the set of arrangements of these knobs would also be different in each of these machines. The basic functionality, you know, of most important of these knobs is the same. And that is what we are going to discuss here in this particular module, okay? So these are various parts. Oh, and I forgot one particular very important part of the machine. And that is something that you just cannot do an ultrasound without it. And what is that? It is this, right? It is this bottle of ultrasound gel. I hope you remember we have discussed, you know, what is the importance of this gel in doing an ultrasound. If you do not use this gel, you cannot absolutely, you know, you cannot do an ultrasound because you will not be able to generate these images on the screen there. This gel is very crucial uh, for the functioning of the ultrasound probe and image acquisition. All right. So this was about the basic components of the machine. Now let us look at the various knobs on this particular console. Let us start with the most basic ones. Now most of these are, you know, will have uh, lights with very specific symbols. They are very easy to understand. Now let us start with the first thing you'll need to do when you start operating an ultrasound machine, right? The first thing you need to do is to register the details of your patient, right? And if you see here on the left hand corner on the top, you see a power button there. I've used that to switch on the machine. And over here, you can see this symbol on this particular, you know, button here. This is the patient registration unit. Now, once we come here, if you look at the screen here, the patient ID has already been auto generated, either it can be auto generated. If it is not in your machine, you can simply an easiest way to do that is to simply put the date in DDMMYY format. And suppose it is your first patient put at 01 in front of it. In that way, it also becomes easy to retrieve, you know, the uh, particular patient of that particular date because the ID is the date itself. Remember this part, though it might look very minuscule to you, it is very, very important to store the credentials of the patient, you know, before you start doing this. It is very tempting, you know, in an emergency setup, you know, at the bedside that you have a patient lying, you have a machine which is ready and why not take the probe in the hand and immediately start doing the ultrasound, right? It is not so because the work, because of the nature of the work that you are doing is very critical. A proper documentation is extremely essential, not just for the storage of the data and archiving the data, but also for medical legal purposes. And therefore, it might take you say 30 seconds, you know, to do all this and then start the scan. Never start a scan until and unless you have registered all the patient's details. So let me say that this particular patient is a uh, Mr. ABC. So first name, last name, right? I have entered here as you can see in the, on the screen, instead of date of birth, I can just put in an age, say 40 years, male patient that I'm going to look at, right? And then you'll see the various functions here. Uh, you can open an older patient as well and, but I'm going to choose to start this particular scan. So this is how I'll start doing the scan. Now, if you see on the screen, whatever details that I have entered, they are already there. This step is very, very important. It ensures that all the images that you're going to acquire are going to be stored under this particular patient ID under this name, so that if ever you need to retrieve these images at a later stage, you can easily do that. So this is a very, very important step. Never start a scan before doing this. 